Hey guys, Adam Katz here with the Old Man Glasses for DogTrainerToolbox.com. I'm going to give you a website critique today of Christine. It's Christina Shipley Donahoe's uh, website, CanineIncline.com. She asked me quite a while ago if I could do a website critique, and I'm finally getting around to it. Um, so let's dig into it. Uh, by the way, uh, if you, you want a website designed for yourself, I've already done all the hard work. You don't have to really do much of anything. If you use our done for you dog training business website offer, just go on over here to dogtrainertoolbox.com and click on this one here that says web design for dog trainers. Watch the video, skim through the benefits, and then book yourself a consultation with me. Uh, anyways, to getting to the critique of Christina's website. Um, this is kind of an interesting one because it doesn't make most of the mistakes that most of you dog trainers are making. So she's done a really good job in a lot of ways. I'm just going to give her a little bit of feedback based on my initial impressions. So um, first thing that I would like to see is now she's done a really good job up here of putting her contact information. In fact, I've never actually seen this. Uh, not a bad idea. Uh, she's got the phone number here. It says DM me, email me, schedule a consultation uh, and services. Now, what I found when I looked at heat map testing um, was that the first place people look for a phone number is in the upper right hand corner right here. So that could that could potentially improve some response. Um, scrolling down, um, let's see what she's got here is something that 99% of you do not have. So she's got a benefit oriented headline and a benefit oriented sub headline. Good job, Christina. So no more puppy blues. Train your dog right from the start, no matter how stubborn, crazy or strong they are. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And right down here, just in case you weren't sure where she's based, you know, maybe somebody out of town referred her or referred you to her or whatever she puts dog training in San Antonio, Seguin, Laverna, San Marcos, New Braunfels, and more travel to you and in-home dog training available, not local, no problem. Virtual coaching offered. Excellent. And then it's got a picture of her, which is also excellent because this tells you that it's not some nameless, faceless, wannabe corporate dog trainer. It's a real person. I can see what she looks like. I can identify with her. Very, very good. Now, um, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this. Um, what she's done is she's used what's called long copy here. This is a long form sales letter primarily. And what I, what I really like is that um, she's used a very large font, which makes it very easy to read, which I think is good. Um, she's got very warm, family-friendly photos here. That's also very good. You notice that the photos are well lit and clear. Um, as you scroll down, because remember, people are scrolling. Um, at best, they're going to primarily read the headlines. Most will not read all of this copy. Um, and my suggestion to Christina is to A-B test it with more of a traditional design, like you don't have to, she doesn't have to use our... Um, are done for your dog training business website service. But just as a comparison, I AB tested um, a long copy approach when I had my, my long, sorry, my last dog training business, my last of three dog training businesses, I put together a long form copy website like this and it underperformed a website that uses all of the same elements which I'm going to go through in just a second. Um, so her results may be different, um, but I would say A-B test it because um, this format compared to my long form sales letter format outperformed by, I want to say about three to one. So it was fairly significant and I'm really, really good at writing long copy. I've made well over $6 million from my long copy sales letters. Um, so it's not like I don't know what I'm, I'm doing. Um, I'm going to, if you do decide to continue with this, this long sales letter format, which you've done a really good job, by the way, let me just continue to run through a few things that I do like, 
Um, I like that she's got this here. She makes it really, really easy. She passes the drunk test. If I, I get home from work and I'm tired and I've been fighting with my wife and I've been, maybe I've had a few beers or who knows what. And you know, the, the dog just chewed up a $3,000 rug and I need to find, I just want to get on the phone with some, somebody. She's made it really easy to figure out how to do that. And that's probably the most important part of the website. Um, now she does make it a little bit difficult to figure out like, like here, what she's doing is she's asking me to dig deep and figure out what the differences are between, um, these different programs. And herein lies the big problem that I found with the long form sales letter approach is that in my opinion, you want to get them off the internet and on the phone as soon as possible. Because what happens is while they're trying to figure all this stuff out, there's a good chance they might get confused and decide to hit the back button, go back to Google and end up on the next dog trainer's website who makes it easier for them to figure out what to do next. Um, but more specifically, my concern is that while the client prospective client is reading through this, their wife calls them to dinner, they close the laptop and then completely forget about you and come back to their search three hours later and start over at, at Google and you've lost them at that point. So in my opinion, the goal of the website should be to get them, get them off the internet and on the phone as soon as possible. Um, but that being said, you've done a really, really good job with, with what you have done. Um, a couple of other things that did jump out at me was you have a photo section. So here's, you can schedule online if you want to schedule for yourself. Um, you've got to meet the trainer section. Um, that's fine. Um, this, the, the bio of the dogs, um, completely irrelevant and unnecessary. Um, it, it doesn't really contribute to the sale, the sale being, meaning moving them closer to scheduling uh, a call with you or picking up the phone and calling you. So anything that doesn't do that, I would get rid of. I understand the logic behind why you put it there. You want them to maybe identify with you, but I, I don't think it works. Um, another call to action. Um, this is good. Um, what I would do with the call to action is give them a, a stronger reason to pick up the phone and call you. Now, this is what I was looking for. Um, you've got these photos here and they're nice photos, but they don't actually contribute to this, to moving me closer to the sale. Um, so I would remove this. Um, you've got call for dog training in San Antonio, Texas and surrounding areas, but in order to make this, in order to increase the response, um, you want to give them a reason. And the reason might be something like call now for your free consultation, evaluation, and temperament test, or, or call now for, um, for a free phone consultation and learn the seven things every San Antonio dog trainer needs to know about training their dog in San Antonio, some, something along those lines. So you give them a reason. Um, I would use this footer space again to reiterate your call to action. Um, now you notice with this website, what we found is that, like I mentioned, the first place people look for contact information is the upper right hand corner. The second place they look is down in the footer. Now the, th the third place that they look is they'll be skimming through. So they see it right here in the above the fold, which I think you did, if I remember correctly, a pretty good job. Um, right down here. Cause believe it or not, even though you have all this here, and even if you had the phone number here, people will still miss it. And so you don't. So what I would do is I would, I would reiterate that right here. I would maybe put it right here between these two paragraphs and you know, call now for your free phone consultation, evaluation, and temperament test, wh whatever it is for your free report on the seven things every San Antonio dog owner needs to know. Um, put that right here because people will miss this. It sounds stupid, but they do. Um, again, what you have done really well is that you have peppered um, a call to action throughout the website. So you've got it here. Let's see. I think you've got it. You've got it down here, maybe. Um, ba, 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 ba. Okay. So you've got it here. And you've got it here. And you've got it here. That's that's all good. 
Um, again, I would, I would ditch this. And then, so put, put it down here again. Um, my big concern is that you notice there was a long period up here where we were scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and you didn't have it, that one right there. But not until I get all the way back up here. And again, it isn't super obvious here. So have it here, but have it here too. Um, one thing that you did good, which I like, is that you've got a picture of your trend, your, um, Testimonials have a picture of the owner with the dog. It's obvious these are real people. Um, how you can make these more powerful is you've done a good job of saying Brittany and Cade, the Keisha can, for example, Keisha can, for example, or Melanie and Whiskey, the Rottweiler. Add the city and state where they're from. Um, that's going to give you even more credibility and also their last name. So it, it really, it, the, the goal with the, the testimonials, what we call success stories, is to show that. These are actual legit people and you've done a really, really good job. I just think adding their last name in the city and state is going to help even more. Um, you've got this over here. I, I presume you've A-B tested this. Um, I haven't, I see it on a lot of websites. I find it a little bit irritating personally, but I have heard some people have good results with it. So, um, that could be a good thing. Um, I figure you probably know better than I do. Um, all in all, a really good job for a long copy dog training business website approach. Again, my, my main issue is just that you um, use the same elements because you've, you've done a lot of stuff, right? You've got, for example, you know, a lot of the same elements that we, we use in our done for you dog training business website. You've got the, the benefit oriented headline and subhead. You've made it relatively easy to find your, your um, contact information. Um, your, uh, your offer is a little bit vague. It's basically just call me. You see here, we have book a free consultation, evaluation and temperament test an $89 value. So it's not just free. We are attaching a value to it, even though we are giving it to them for free. Um, but, um, you know, you've got, you've got trust elements on your site. Um, you've got the testimonials. Um, so you, you did a really, really good job. My main concern is just a B testing a, it against a more um, straightforward um, service business type format that's still a conversion optimized design, like similar to this one. Again, you can't copy this. But I think you get where I'm going. Um, a B test it. You you may find that this outperforms, or once you add the 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 different suggestions I gave you, it may outperform a more traditional design. But you don't know until you actually test it. Um, from my testing, it did not. And so that's why I'm making this suggestion. Anyways, thanks for giving me the opportunity to uh, review your website. I know it's uh, been probably six months since you asked, but um, um, that's what you get for free. So um, would love to hear your thoughts and um, hope to see you in the Dog Trainer Marketing Group on Facebook, uh, where you'll be amongst over, I think, 4,300 professional dog training business owners swapping secret strategies, tactics, and tips. Whew. I'm ready for a nap. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you soon.